A letter came to me from Lady Sheila Hindmark, venture captain of the Pathfinder Society here in Magnamar and apparently the only one in all of Varicia. She invited me to her manor with a proposition to join this society and a team of specialized individuals, whatever that could mean. Salome has only encouraged me to go, and with my recent acquaintance with Belgrim, another member of the Pathfinder Society, I think I feel just secure enough to go. Hello everybody and welcome to Phoenix Ashes Art. I'm Marianne and today we're going to be looking over this character design of my Pathfinder character, Laurel Celasta. I hope you enjoyed the story segment at the beginning there. I figured it was a good framing device and starting point, uh, at least for where our campaign really began. I'm hoping to get all the characters from our current party drawn up, but uh, Laurel is obviously the best place to start, at least for me, because she's my girl and I know the most about her. So uh, let's get into it. Laurel is a pretty simple girl all in all, um, just very unsure of her footing in the world. As she only has a few vestiges of home and positive influence from younger years to guide her, and as a result I wanted her body language to be one of uncertainty, so that's what I was working on with the pose. Especially in the way she's holding her staff, uh, both hands on it, one gripping harder than the other, while the other arm comes across as kind of a shielding motion. That front arm especially did give me a little bit of trouble. I had to double and triple check uh, my reference to make sure it was in proportion at the right angle, <laughs> etc. But that's not unusual. Uh, anatomy can be difficult at times. While I fiddle with the base sketch and how she's going to work, uh, let's get into a little bit more of her backstory. She's a half-elf sorceress originally from a small town near Ember Lake called Nybor. Everything I've been able to find in the source material, it seems like an idyllic little place full of all sorts of heritages that make an elfin human couple fit right in as par for the course. Which made it a perfect place for um, her mother and father to settle after a career of adventuring. Especially for the open and welcoming attitude the majority of the population seem to have. They set up a little homestead just outside of town, and that's where Laurel spent her early childhood. And it definitely affected her style choices. She leans for simple. You can probably tell with the button shirt, heavy skirt, and waist belt combo that she will end up with here. Her magical abilities showed quite early, uh, not entirely surprising her parents as her father, Gavriel, uh, the elf side of her family is a caster as well. So thankfully between him and her mother, Elowen, they were able to keep a magically prone toddler reined in. <laughs> I like to imagine that there were a lot of shenanigans that were amplified because of her magic. All in all, a happy family. At least it was until Laura was five. It was around that age that Gabrielle and Elowen figured they had enough of a handle on the situation that Laura was old enough to be with one parent or the other for a short period while the other would go on a venture to make either more income or if they were asked, by old party members, and Gavriel was the first to go, and this venture ended up being his last. Which brings me back to a fixture of her design. The staff she holds belonged to Gavriel. It's named Seren, and he made it himself, which is why it matters quite a bit to her. She rarely lets that thing go in campaign, <laughs> although it didn't come into her possession until she ended up in Magnamar for this next reason. Within the next five years after uh, her father's death, Laurel's abilities continued to grow, and her mother could tell between her own slight knowledge of magic and seeing Gavriel's abilities from their younger years that she would not be able to teach Laurel what she needed to know. And there was no one in Nybor that she thought could do so either. So she called upon an old friend. His name was Kenrick Fyron. Of the old venturing party, Fyron was the only other solid member that had been there since the beginning. In fact, he was there before Elowen even came into the fold. So with a mother's plea and trust in a friend, Laurel was made his apprentice. She would, for the duration of her training, be staying with her new master in the Malagorian Mountains to the northeast side of Ember Lake. All seemed well at first. 
Master Fyron taught her the foundations of magic, altering it as needed, as casters of different classes handle magic differently. Laurel's class of sorcerer, for instance, basically has magic ingrained within them, either by blood or some other means, and they have access to the spells they know and rarely need material anchors versus, say, a wizard who needs physical spell components or ingredients and therefore require more time and planning with what they are going to cast. All in all, he was a firm and unyielding teacher. He seemed very sure of her capabilities and pushed her to reach them. Phyron is a follower of a god called Nethus in the Pathfinder universe. Nethus is a god of magic, and his main tenant seek out magical power and use it. An idea that led to his own mind and body being split into chaos, nonetheless did grant the power he had been seeking and an ability to have omniscience. For a magic user willing to put aside their conscience, you can see the appeal. Hence Mr. Fyron's dedication and his tendency to let his methods get a little severe while teaching Laurel. Many of her spells, even the more simple ones, have stories attached to them. Dancing Lights, for instance, a simple spell that creates uh, magical balls of illumination. She was forced to discover that by being locked into the windowless workroom with all other sources of light previously snuffed in a ruse that they were done for the day. But something like that pales in comparison to how Master Fyron taught magical combat. He stressed practical application, essentially putting Laurel through mock battles, having her experience the real effects of different spells. As she recalls, he'd say, Enemies will aim to strike, to kill. It's no benefit to you if I deliberately miss. And he often didn't. <laughs> you may notice in uh, the design of Laurel there, right above the top button of her blouse, there is a fan shape. That's a scar. A burn scar, to be precise, uh, and not the only one. Fyron favors fire as his choice element, and under her sleeves, mostly along her forearms, are defensive wound scars. They were treated and sometimes magically healed just enough that she could continue the next day, but the mark of her failing would remain. Another more noticeable one that will show up when we finally get to the coloring is the light strand in her hair on the left side. It's also from one of these sessions. Um, one of the rare times Fyron decided to use a frost element spell. It knocked her out and uh, did some permanent cold damage, making that strand permanently light. And before anyone accuses me of torturing my poor girl for no reason, um, it does come into play on her character sheet. She does have fire resistance to at least uh, three points of damage. So it does come in handy. <laughs> the GM allowed me that ability and uh, a few others that make her far more hardy because during gameplay, you will find that the magic users and casters are what we call squishy. <laughs> it means they are easily hit and easily hurt. So she definitely needed some toughening. Anyway, uh, this sort of training went on for a while and for all Laurel knew, it was normal that all casters had to go through something like this to hone their skill. Although it wasn't just physical rigor she had to go through, she was also trained in Thessalonian history. In the Pathfinder universe, there's a point where the world collapsed, basically bringing down an empire called Thassalon which now has left behind ruins and artifacts of great power. And knowing Phyron's clamoring for such things, he certainly had a library of texts on it, and especially magic from that era. Laurel didn't quite mind the studying. It was a reprieve, a time of quiet and focus. It was intriguing, this lost empire of Thassalon. Her curiosity for the myths and legends of this whole past world could thrive, <laughs> and she could sneak in a doodle or two in her notes, a lot of times being a close approximation to the illustrations in the text she worked with, which would come in handy later, after her escape. She finally became wise to what she was experiencing as she got older, and Master Fyron seemed to be getting more erratic. More and more she dreamt of escape. She made a few attempts, the first few she turned back from, more afraid of the consequences of being caught. It was the second to last one that finally forced her hand, because she did get caught. That previously mentioned burn scar in her chest was the resulting punishment within one brutal combat training session, a casting of Scorching Ray that nearly killed her. 
Between that and the nightmares featuring Nethys, a presence she fully associates with magic unhindered and left wild, always feeling as if his eyes were on her, staying was no longer an option. So she made one more attempt. This would result in the final and most prominent scar in her character design, um, the one going down the right side of her face, just skirting her eye from a too close struggle with her master and a slice of a returning dagger as he was desperate to keep her in his grasp. If you were to ask her what she remembers, it wouldn't be much. Flashes of fear and chaos and eventually fire. Fire from a distance. She was free, but uncertain if she would be pursued. If Thyron is alive, he'd certainly have enough ire against her to fuel him on. Which is why she chose to go to Magnamar rather than home. Nybar would have been the first place he looked. Instead, she's found safe haven in Magnamar's Ordelia district with Salome. Salome was something of a patron to Laurel's parents and Thyron in their early ventures. Uh, she'd served as their information and contractee for situations she could not handle. By this point, she'd long fallen out with Thyron and having been the first to see him for what he was. And so Salome still holds a safe connection for communication back to Laurel's hometown and her mother. She has been helping Laurel reacclimate and recenter, while also pushing Laurel in the direction of the Pathfinder Society. Which brings us to the start of the campaign. And also back to the story clip at the beginning. <laughs> All right, so we've gotten to the coloring stage here, which was very, very satisfying. The um, sketch was a little bit grueling on me. Um, I had a very hard time trying to get Laurel's face right. I don't know if anyone else has this issue, but I have certain characters that refused to let me get their face down on paper, and Laurel is one of those. I know exactly how she looks in my head, but sometimes I cannot quite get her features in the right place. Um, thankfully, it did turn out here pretty close to what I like. So as we're close to wrapping up here, let me fill you in on a few added things in her design, as this is pretty much how Laura looks currently in the campaign. At the start, Sally May gave her Seren, the staff her father made, which we've gone over. But in one of the recent sessions, she also gave her a pendant, which you can see around Laurel's neck. On the back is inscribed with the letters E.C. for Elowen Cormay, Cormay being Laurel's mother's maiden name. Its effect is that anytime Laurel casts magic missile, um, for the uninitiated, imagine a more potent nerf dart, and you have the idea, it, it deals force damage. Uh, the stone glows and adds one more missile to the spell, which is very helpful because this is a particular spell that has an automatic hit. It cannot miss. Also, once a day, it can add two more missiles if the wearer is a descendant of Elowen, which is a very curious thing story-wise, as we're left to assume that her father, Gavriel, made this item too, with the intent and knowledge that it would be passed along. Laurel has asked Salome the rhyme and reason for all this, but either she doesn't know, or is being a wily old woman about it and keeping her secrets. <laughs> Maybe there are answers to come. I'm going to leave you all to the music here while we go through some final rendering and getting a background in. the completed piece of laurel i hope you all enjoyed and if you'd like to see more follow me on instagram at phoenix ashes art 
or if you'd like to see more here, please like and subscribe. Hope to see you all in the next one.